So I think I covered all the bases without getting too extremely deep into working with mods and certain exotics and being charged with light and war mind cells and other crap, you know. So now it's time to talk about that other crap, you know. Heads up everyone, my name is Sentinel Grey and welcome to the channel. So I apologize because this video actually kind of slipped my mind. I forgot to really get into, you know, mods and all that crap. But I'm doing it now. So anyone who is either confused or not confident in what they're doing with mods, I am here to help. I'm going to start off with talking about weapon mods because they have a much shorter list than armor mods and are practically universal, comparatively speaking. Weapon mods can be placed on any weapon pretty much right out the gate without having to level it up or max out its masterwork. And luckily, almost every mod can be put on any weapon. It just varies on how much it'll actually help. Along with that, weapon mods are self-explanatory, but I feel there's a few that kinda need explained just to be safe. Three weapon mods that correlate with each other are the minor, major, and boss spec mods. If you haven't been playing the game long enough, it might be hard to spot the difference between some of the enemies you go up against and what they're called. Minor spec works on any sort of red bar enemies, usually dregs, acolytes, goblins, legionaries, that sort of enemy. Major spec focuses more on tough yellow bar enemies like captains, minotaurs, and that thing, anything with a yellow bar of health. And boss spec works on any named enemy or champion. So any enemy that has like Valus to Ark, Scourge of the Seas, I don't know, something, you know what I mean. And no, you cannot actually slap a boss spec mod on all of your guns and have the damage work down from there. It's not how it works, that's why there's three separate mods. Another set of mods that are specific in their use are the mods for Dragonfly, Rampage, and Surrounded. These mods only affect a weapon that has that specific perk on them, so it's not like you just add this mod to add the perk to your gun in addition to the others. That would be insane and overpowered, and I would tell you to use nothing else. The last weapon mods I want to talk about are the Adept weapon mods. There's only one way of obtaining these, and that is going flawless in trials. That's it. And on top of that, these mods can only be placed on adept weapons, which you can only get from either going flawless in trials or getting them to drop from the Grandmaster Nightfalls. Try and obtain all of these at your own will. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try. I have yet to even attempt to get any of these mods because PvP is not really my thing, and especially whenever it's something as sweaty as trials and as bad as trials can be, and some of the horror stories I've heard, just I'm, I'm not doing it. Let's move on to armor mods. Generally speaking, each section of armor has specific mods that you can slot in. As an example, head armor mods can't be placed in pieces of leg armor and vice versa. The nice thing about this is that whenever you go to, you know, slot something into a leg mod, the head mods won't even pop up on the list so you can't get confused. Another thing to note on armor mods is that some of them have a certain polarity, and by polarity I mean energy type. So for example, you can only slot arc energy mods into pieces of armor that have the arc energy type. And to go even further than that, there are very specific mods, as an example, impact induction, that are only a solar arms armor mod. You still with me? If you are, I have one last little tidbit of information for you. Each armor mod costs a certain amount of energy. Since armor has a max of 10 energy whenever it's masterwork, you have a lot of room to play with. But remember the energy cost of your mods as you slot them. You can eat up that energy very quickly. Alright, now I want to go through and take a look at each slot in a piece of armor to show you the different mods that can be placed in which slot. I'll use this helmet here as an example. In the first column, you have mods that affect your stats. Stats being your mobility, resilience, recovery, discipline, intellect, and strength. These mods can either increase your stats by a little or a lot, since there are two different variations of the same stat mod. Each stat mod also costs differently too, depending on what you want to increase and by how much. Don't forget to use these. Actually, to tell you the truth, if I ever wear a piece of armor that isn't masterworked, I always have a mod slotted in this spot because of how much it'll help your ability regen or whatever you want it to help. 
Moving on to the next two slots. Why the next two? Well, because luckily they can take the same type of mods in them and are always mods that usually affect your abilities or weapons directly. There are mods that increase your grenade cooldown on melee kills or vice versa, and weapon mods that help reload speed, flinch reduction, and ammo pickups. But be aware of how much energy you use in slotting these mods. Using something like two ammo finders can seriously eat up your energy. This is also the mod slots where you start to see energy polarity mods come into play, like that impact induction mod that I talked about before. Finally, let's talk about the fourth mod slot. Depending on when your piece of armor was released, this slot is either called the Legacy Mod Slot or the Combat Style Mod Slot. Regardless, it works the same way. The only difference is the small restrictions you have on the mods. See, the Legacy Mod Slot are any mods that are from Season 11 and back, including the Last Wish, Scourge of the Past, and Crown of Sorrow raids. Combat style mods seem to be focused on what we're focusing on in this video, which is Charge with Light, Warmind Cell, and Elemental Well mods. These three types of mods are just as the slot describes, different combat styles. Each of these types of mods come with different abilities and play styles, and some even play off of each other, but for the most part they stay in their own lanes. Warmind Cell mods work around you producing Warmind Cells by using either 7th Seraph or Ikelos weapons. Using these types of mods can buff or heal yourself and nearby allies, and even put a debuff on some bigger enemies. I play with people who swear by Warmind Cell builds, and I have yet to check any of them out, but I know the capabilities that they can do. Charged with Light builds vary on what they can do, but the effects of being charged with Light usually only affect you. Being charged with Light, you can increase your weapon damage, ability regen, or even protect you from taking damage. But with each of those things happening, it consumes a charge of Light. For me, this is my personal preference. This is what I use on all of my builds currently. Finally, Elemental Well mods are new as of this video coming out, but they seem to very much play to the idea of using only one element type of damage, whether it be Arc, Solar, or Void. These types of mods can give you ability energy, reduce your super cooldown, and give you increased weapon damage, so I actually might be looking into these in the near future as soon as I grab them all. Now I don't want to get into each individual mod and what it does and how it impact your gameplay because if I do that then you and I are both going to be here all day. What I will tell you is to take a look at each of these mods so you can craft a build that you want to use. And I want to do something for you guys. I want to make a build in front of you because I know some people learn best when shown exactly what they need to do and how to build something. For this build, we're going to be using Bottom Tree Sunbreaker, aka Code of the Siege Breaker, and the Hollow Fire Heart Exotic Chest Piece. The objective for this build is that once we gain our super, to not use it, and to mainly have our abilities be the grenade and melee, and have them be available to us as often as possible. Okay, so since I'm doing this live, please forgive me if I start ranting or whatever, or if this seems a little awkward over time, but... I'm going to give him my best shot. Okay. I have every single piece of armor that I usually use for this build. All empty, not slotted with mods or anything like that. And you can see my stats right here. They're not great. The only thing that's good is my grenade stat. So, uh, whenever I usually mod my armor, there's a few things that immediately I go for. So because I have a arc helmet, I immediately put on either Powerful Friends or Radiant Light. If you read what it says, not the actual perk, not the thing that it gives you, not the whole casting your super causes nearby allies to become charged with light. I mean, that's, that's cool, but we're looking at that plus 20 strength. This mod's secondary perk is active when at least another arc mod is socketed into this armor, or at least one other arc charged with light mod is socketed into another piece of armor you are wearing. That means Radiant Light can tag with powerful friends if they're on separate pieces of armor, obviously because you can't put them on the same piece. So you immediately get two tiers of uh, two tiers of strength in two tiers of mobility, plus the other abilities that they come with right out the gate. So personally, this is something that has been a, a must for me and all of my choices. Like every single time that I've done my armor, this is what I've done. 
so instantly. We have those increases. And it's really, it bumps it up to seven. It bumps it up by 20 points. Like, you can't, there, there's no beat in that. That's, it's awesome. Um, and usually what I do is I go through, if I know I have a masterwork piece of armor at all, like, so any of this, I usually go for the, um, I guess you could say the combat style mods first. So I mod those in for these gauntlets. I want to use charged up, which allows an additional stack of charge with light. Uh, for the chest piece, I want to use, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, taking charge, picking up uh, orbs of power, you become charged with light. And because, because that's a thing, so orbs of power, um, just in case you don't know, orbs of power come from super kills, super damage, whatever. They also come from getting multi kills with masterworked weapons. So because my Arctic Haze is masterworked, every single multi kill I get with Arctic Haze is going to be, you know, is going to drop an orb of power for myself and my teammates. So I'm going to be producing orbs of power all the time, regardless of if I use my super or not. The one thing I will warn you is that the orbs of power that spawn on multi-kills do not work on dragonfly so if you get a kill nor if you get a normal kill normal headshot kill and then you proc dragonfly and dragonfly kills another enemy it does not count as a multi-kill for the gun which is exactly why i don't have the dragonfly spec weapon mod on it because I don't want that increased damage. I don't want that increased radius. What I want to do is I want to produce orbs of power for myself and my teammates. So I would rather have something like major spec to where I'm dealing better damage to yellow bars. Uh, going back, powerful friends is already on there. Now here's the, here's how my build works. Other than the powerful friends and radiant lights, cause this helps too. This, this helps my friends more than it does me. Because, you know, casting your super charges allies with light and then using this one when you become charged with lightning by allies gain. Uh, also become charged with light if they're not already. Cool things to have, side, side things to have. Um, but here's where my build goes. Because I have void energy, I can use protective light. So granted, it is a minus 10 strength, but we had plus 10 strength because of how, um, which one was it? how radiant light works so we still have a positive gain as far as strength is concerned granted we lost 10 but still that's a positive gain in my eyes and i'd much rather have that positive gain than just not have any at all so because protective light does its thing protective light while charged with light you gain significant resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed this effect consumes all stacks of charges with light the more stacks consumed the longer the damage resistance lasts so standard, you can hold two charges of light at a time. With charged up, it allows for one additional stack for three stacks of charge with light. Those three stacks is equal to 15 seconds of damage resistance, which if you're good enough and if you're fast enough, and especially in these new battleground activities, you can definitely go in kill a whole bunch of enemies get rocked and you know have protective light proc have that damage resistance and if you've killed enough enemies if you and your allies have killed enough enemies or whatever you can have three more stacks of charge with light before protective light even runs out it's nuts it's crazy i love it it's it's absolutely amazing um so those are the combat mods or whatever now I want to look at what I can or what I want to increase here. Uh, like I said, intellect, not a factor for me because of a number of reasons. One, because of hollow fire heart and what it does. As long as I keep my super full, the grenade and the melee ability just easy as hell. They'll come back in no time. Plus, I mean, if we're using masterworked weapons, they're going to drop orbs of uh, power, which I mean, it's going to get that even faster. Um, but for me personally, because this is my play style, I am noticing that my resilience and my recovery is very low and I want to switch that up. So what I'll do is I'll come here. 
put some recovery in. Put some more recovery in. And there's a way that I did this before that I think I screwed this up whenever I was thinking about this build, but I forget. And the reason why I am doing three slots in resilience is because I'm a titan. That's going to help me get my barricade back faster. And another thing too is I'm very much a person to where all I have to do is switch out a few pieces of armor and I can still, like my playstyle doesn't change very much. If my playstyle is similar, like if I wanted to, I could swap out for Heart of Inmost Light. And that changes a little bit, so that means all I gotta do is, like, you know, change up a few of my stats somewhere so that it's this stays 80 and this stays 70. So that's that's a that's a problem for future me. But for this build, uh, now that is for just stats and the combat uh, combat mods. If we want to go even further, I can go in and say like, oh yeah, let me just put, because I'm going to be using my auto rifle all the time, let me get auto rifle ammo finder, or even better, auto rifle targeting, because that's going to be important. Uh, what else? If I want to do something like this, uh, this is really nice because this impact induction mod that I was talking about before, causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. I mean... This build is all about getting your abilities back faster. So, yeah. And I made this build before all of the mods, and actually before this current season. So the Elemental Well mods that are out right now, uh, where are they at? Yeah, all of the Elemental Well mods that are out right now, I've yet to play with them for any extended period of time. So I may get back to you guys with Elemental Well mods and if you guys are interested, please let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, as far as these types of mods, the the run of the mill uh, armor mods for each piece, it's all personal preference. So like, because I'm using an auto rifle, uh, where is it at? There you go, auto rifle reserves, because why not? Or I could use auto rifle, unflinching auto rifle aim and just totally like double down on Arctic Haze being a thing. Um, if I want to, I can put this on because reduce all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an orb of power. It's all about getting my abilities back even more. Um, and that just goes through. And actually right now, this current season, um, because focusing lens is a thing and because everybody loves to use stasis and everything this is amazing because whenever i try and burn something this comes into play and it and it deals damage like a uh like a uh hammer strike like melting point so it's it's just really nice but that's it for the build i showed you guys how i do it um hopefully it maybe you guys think about how you want to build some things and like I said previously, Warmind Cell builds, uh, I know some people who absolutely swear by them. Don't be afraid to like look at all of these mods because you can do some cr pretty crazy things. And now after watching that, you understand why I use a script. Sorry, I get really awkward and really ranty and everything like that. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe as well. And if you like live content, I am live on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's a link for that in the description box below. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Remember, keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.